Hello everybody and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to play D&D online in general, and then look specifically at Roll20 and some basics to set up your game and get it going. There are many ways to play D&D online, but the current most popular and accessible options are either Fantasy Grounds or Roll20. Now, everyone has their own personal tastes as to which to use, but for this video, we'll be focusing on Roll20, as it's the one of the two that I have more experience in, though I do want to explore Fantasy Grounds further in the future. When I have made use of it, the UI has been gorgeous and the rollable tables and dice are great. The benefits of these two virtual tabletops is that you can make use of inbuilt character sheets, which allow for very responsive clicks and drags of different sections, making them a very quick and easy way to both calculate bonuses and to roll on the correct attribute, skill, weapon, or spell. There are, however, many more options, such as utilizing Discord and D&D Beyond to run sessions, or making use of Google Hangouts with fillable Excel or paper sheets. Honestly, your imagination and computer situation is the limit. Now, for voice software, you could use the Roll20's inbuilt voice and video options if you are using that. However, in my experience, it's better to use something external, such as Discord or Skype. In my games, we make use of a Discord server which allows us to set a server location to one that suits the players, and make sure that we can easily switch if one particular server starts to lag on us. You can also do a private call with the players, which allows you to also have high resolution video, which is pretty damn handy. So that leads us into how to find players. There are many ways to find players online, but this is a process that can take time to find just that right group that fits your own tastes and wants. If you have friends across the world, then brilliant! Recruit them and play with them and get started right away. However, if you want to find a brand new group of people to play with, or even join somebody's group, then you're in luck. Nowadays, there are plenty of great options to find players, from dedicated subreddits that allow you to post or respond to looking for group ads, to Twitter and specific looking for group hashtags, to my personal favorite, the Roll20 option. The inbuilt options to search for game type, system, beginner-friendly games, paid or unpaid, and much more, allows for a catered search in moments, presenting you with multiple options for games. The great thing about using this tool is that you can find a game that suits your needs quite easily and fast. Now, it's always good to play a test session and see if you gel well with the group. I heavily suggest reading the other posts listed under the game and getting to grips with both what the game's themes are and the type of people that are playing the game. Uh, the type of game that they want to run, for example, is a big thing. If you're wanting to play a narrative-focused game, find one that leads into that. In contrast, if you want a dungeon crawl experience, then make sure to pick a game that wants to do the same. We're gonna move on to a very basic rundown of how to set up a game online with Roll20. So, you have your players, you've chosen your virtual tabletop and you're ready to go. You're running, so what next? So aside from planning your sessions and campaign notes that you need, you need to also get your virtual tabletop ready to go and get familiar with it. So, you want to make a game. Awesome. And you've chose to use Roll20. Brilliant. I know a little bit about that. So, log into Roll20 and press the Create New Game button. This opens up a new page with various options for your game. For this example, we're setting up a D&D 5th edition game. So we will keep to that whilst we work through this. Name your game whatever you would like and assign any tags that you think will be relevant to arrange your library. After this, scroll down and click on the Character Sheet tab to select the character sheet and system you want to use. Now, the good thing about Roll20 is that it has a massive amount of sheets for various games ready to go, all form fillable and many with auto calculations and clickable roll buttons to help minimize the amount of time waiting and typing in rolls, which, the 5th edition sheet that's official from Roll20 in particular is awesome at doing. Once you've done this, click the confirm button and your game is made. Now at this point, you can find the game in your list of games under home page. From there, you have two options. 
option one. You click the name of the game and you're sent to a page where you can add details for your game, such as a description or the next date of it being played. You can also invite players from here. Second option, you press start game and enter the campaign's own play space. This is where you'll run your game. You can now invite players either through your games page, as previously shown, or from your chat, which gives you a link to post to players when you hover over the box to reveal it. So, let's take a tour of the UI of Roll20 and what you need to know. So in your game, to the left of the screen is the toolbar, which features all of the tools you need to manipulate and draw on your maps. These are, from top to bottom, the selection and pan tool, the layer selection, the drawing and text tools, effects tool, zoom tool, ruler tool, reveal and hide tool for fog of war specifically, initiative tracker, roller, and help. These can be used for manipulation and control of the main play area. Now, to the right of the page are multiple tabs and a chat bar. The symbols at the top of these dictate which section will be visible at any given time. These are, from left to right, the chat, which allows you to see chat feeds for roles, whispers, announcements, player and GM chat, all in real time. The art library. This contains any art you have uploaded to Roll20, as well as searchable libraries for assets free to use or searchable through Roll20 itself for drag and drop use in your games. The journal, an all important area where you can create character sheets, handouts, and folders to contain and arrange them in. This is probably the space that you're going to spend your most time in. The compendium, this is where you can look up any rules, monsters, equipment, or spells listed in the SRD and quickly drag and drop them into your character sheet or onto your page. You can extend this by buying the books through Roll20 or just fill them in yourself on the sheet. The jukebox. This is where you can add music to your game and sound effects. You can search them up through the partnered providers that are listed when you press the add button or even add your own music. Macros. You can create macros, buttons to trigger certain commands, and also set the bar for them to be visible. I've used it before to make a personal GM role command that queries the mod for easy checks behind the GM screen, so to speak. Settings. This is where you can set all of your game's backend settings for colors of bars, display name, camera and audio setup, and master volume of all your audio for yourself, among many, many more things. I highly suggest checking this out in more detail when you start up your own game. Now, all of this is good to know, but what you're mainly gonna be here for and mainly gonna be seeing as a player especially is the character sheet. So, how do you create those and how do you see them? So you can create character sheets by clicking the add button at the top right of the journal tab and then selecting character. This will make a randomly named character sheet with a blank permission, making it only visible to a DM. You can change this by clicking on the sheet, hitting the edit section and then assigning who can view it and who can edit it to the correct player. Finally, you just hit save. To access the character sheet section of this, Click the character sheet tab, usually in the middle, and there you go. You can fill in attributes and skills and it auto calculates the final value in the mod. You can drag in weapons and items from the compendium, access your spell page, and even drag and drop spells in to save time. You can also fill in character details that you need to remember and even just click and select a class and it sets your class saving through proficiency fast. The best bit about all of this is that most of the sheet auto calculates and rolls if you simply just press the button, which is brilliant to introduce new players and to lessen the math for everyone involved and the time of typing in dice rolls. You can also roll dice manually by using the dice roller tool or typing forward slash R space 1D and then whatever it is you wanna roll, be it a D20, D8, D10 into the chat and pressing enter. Done. There's a lot more to these sheets, but those are the very basics. I could do something more detailed later for those who are interested, but that is the very core of the character sheets of Roll20. Now, 
Finally, we'll look at how you add maps and how you navigate to different pages in Roll20. Now there's plenty to cover with this, which could take up an entire video of its own, but the very basics are as follows. There's a blue tab at the top right of the page. Click that and you'll see a bar appear to add maps. Click add new map to create a new page and then click the cog next to the map when you hover over it to assign specific values and scales and details. After this, click the page to open it and you can now drop maps into the map layer and drop your player tokens in by click and dragging the character sheets in the journal so long as they have a picture onto the map. To have players see a map that you want them to see, just drag the banner at the top over to the page you want to show and drop it. There are other features here such as layers, fog of war, dynamic lighting, and much, much more. But for this video, those are the very basics of setting up Roll20. I hope this video has helped to clear some of the confusion about starting tabletop role-playing games online, specifically D&D, which is by far the most popular thanks to channels like Critical Role, Encounter Roleplay, WebDM, and many, many other amazing creators out there. While this video focused on Roll20, there are so many methods to play online and none of them are incorrect. Whatever works for you and your group is the best one to do. Now, if you want to see more guides from me, let me know in the comments below and I'll happily do some. Also, what is your preferred online method of play? Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more tabletop RPG content, lore videos, and much, much more weekly. Thank you.